I would say two years ago, I was sick, so sick and disconnected from this world. I retrained my brain and this is me today. Like, I am healed. It's beyond amazing. So I need some help to stay focused here. So I've just decided how I'm going to do this is um, use the questions that Annie had asked me through email. That's what I'm going to use as my guide. And then we'll just um, go from there. Okay. All right. So the first question was, how long did I suffer from my limbic system impairment? And did I know what triggered it? Um, I would say I suffered for about five years. Um, for me, it started after having, I would say after having my two boys. I had postpartum depression and anxiety. Um, and although at the time I was maybe aware of it, I was also trying to hide it. And I did a really good job at trying to deny the fact that I had um, a mental illness. And from there, it was just years of pain, stress. I was physically sick. I carried a lot of um, pain in my neck and my shoulders. I had headaches. I started to develop a lot of bizarre but irritating symptoms. I would lose my balance. I would have a lot of um, tingling, all of that happening in my body. And we weren't really sure what was going on. But my tipping point, like Annie talked about hers, was two years ago. And I chose to have a foot surgery while I was awake on the table. Um, I thought I would be in a better position because they wouldn't have to put me under and that my recovery would actually be easier. Um, I wasn't emotionally strong going into that surgery. Um, and I also felt I was being a little bit pushed towards it from my surgeon. Um, so what I know now, is that the brain is neuroplastic and it can change for the worse or better. It's also more likely to change when you're in that heightened state of emotion and that was me going into that surgery. Um, so it was just a recipe for disaster and that's exactly what happened. Um, after that surgery, the first day after, I basically went into post-traumatic stress disorder and it just went downhill from there. And I was just thrown into the complete full on fight or flight mode, anxiety attacks, panic attacks. And that's how it started for me. So what illnesses had I been diagnosed with? So like I said, I wasn't officially diagnosed with depression, but I 100% had it. And my doctor basically tried to categorize everything into the generalized anxiety disorder category. Um, she also sent me down the MS road. She told me, Paula, she says this could be MS. And I remember that day very clearly in her office. And I was really discouraged at that time because I really tried to help myself through this process. And I wasn't going there expecting to hear those words. And I kind of got sent down that road. Um, I was followed at the MS clinic for four years. And just this last August, I was cleared and given the green light. So that door is closed, and that is behind me as well today. <sighs> How did this affect your quality of life? Limitations, restrictions, relationships, ability to work, socialize, all of that. And how did it affect, and how did it affect me emotionally, psychologically, and physically? Basically, the quality of my life was hugely impacted. Um, and I probably don't even know that as much like then. But where I stand today, like looking back, like it was huge. But I didn't know any different. But yes, <sighs> this is emotional. Living with post-traumatic stress disorder, I was in a constant state of fight or flight. And basically, in my, everything in my environment was becoming a perceived threat to me. So slowly, I was being squeezed out of everything in my life. I couldn't control it anymore, and I was no longer feeling comfortable. Um, it was crazy, but the subtle sound of an, a clock or an appliance clicking on or off, it would hit me physically, and I would go into a state of panic just from those subtle noises. 
like my sensory processing became thrown off. So like Annie talked about her sense of smell, for me, it was visually and sound and um, air. Like I would walk into a store, like a grocery store, and basically just the overhead fans and lights and noises and just that vast space of those stores. Like I couldn't handle it. Like I, I wanted to hit the ground because I had no sense of balance. I'd want to like hold on to like the shelves when I was walking. I just I was thrown off completely and I couldn't I couldn't control it. So I did actually have to quit my job because it was no longer a safe place for me as well. So these are the things that was happening to me. That was my experience. I would wake up in a sleep with a full-on panic attack. Um, and then I did start reacting to those electromagnetic fields. And at that time, I didn't know that that could happen. But um, through sharing it, there was a couple people that said, this is what can happen. And yeah, it was happening to me as well. So basically, bottom line it, I was depressed and I was disconnected from life. I was totally 100% on the path of illness. and. If it wasn't for Annie, like, I would have, like, died a slow death. And my children would not have the mom that they have today. So that's pretty huge. Okay, here we go. So how many different medical professionals or treatments did I have prior to taking this program? Well, I sought out many healthcare professionals. Um, I tried to keep my distance from the medical professionals. But there was always this sense of like doom that something was really wrong with me. Um, but they couldn't offer me any answers as to understanding like why this was happening to me. And they, all they could do was wait until I fell apart and then try to like help me or put me back together. And I remember my doctor saying, I said, like, what am I supposed to do like with this MS thing? Like, and she's just like, well, if you lose a function of your like a limb or this, she's like, go to the emergency room. Like, that was it, we were waiting. And so, I didn't love that. But anyway, so I really tried on my own, how can I help myself? And I saw, um, well, the MS doctors, specialists, but then I tried the physiotherapists, chiropractors, massage therapists, naturopathic doctors, Reiki masters, and while all of these people are super valuable and some of them are still on my team today, what I've come to realize is that the healing really can only come from within and we must be willing to help ourselves first and foremost before anybody else can. Um, so Annie gives us the tools and the strategies to help heal our limbic systems from trauma. And when this underlying cause is addressed, the rest just falls into place naturally. It's nothing short of a miracle. Page one. <laughs> ha. I'm relaxing a little bit. So how much money do you think I spent prior to the program? Well, from all the treatments that I've util utilized and listed above, you can easily come to the conclusion that it was a lot of money. Thousands of dollars were spent on me trying to get well. Um, the number would still be adding up today if it wasn't for this program. It stopped the financial bleed 100%. And really, it's the best dollars I've ever invested. It's given me the greatest um, return, and you can't put a price on your health. Without it, you really do have nothing. The changes that I have experienced since taking this program and committing to the daily practice, because yes I did, have been beyond amazing and what I could have ever imagined. I felt a shift immediately during the workshop and then um, that just gave me the momentum and the desire to want to commit to this. Um, the daily positive changes that kept happening kept me on focus and um, kept me on track. I felt more awake than I had ever felt. My mental fog was lifted and I could hear the whispers of my heart, like my soul was coming alive. Like I was no longer living like with all these negative thoughts in my head and all this negative chatter, like it was quiet. And then my body was just like responding physically like 
It was crazy. And I was no longer living in fear. I was like this kid, like my eyes were wide open and it was like everything that I was seeing was like the first time. So I went into this program with the hopes of physically healing and the, and the mental and emotional healing that occurred was like the greatest side effect ever. What would I say to someone who is still suffering or who is considering this program? Firstly, have faith in your ability to do this and the power you hold to heal your body. This program will give you the tools necessary to retrain your brain for lasting success. If your brain can change for the worse, it can change for the better. This I know. I've also come to realize how like we can read all the books out there and they all tell us what we're, you know, we can have this life and we, we know when we read it, it makes sense. Like, yeah, I want that life, I can do that. But then it's like, what do I do, right? And it's, so that's what this program does is it's bridging that gap and it's giving you a system and a protocol that's gonna take you from like here to there, like we know what we want, but we don't know how to get there. Is it easy? No, this is work. The program requires dedication, self-discipline, but is it worth it? Absolutely. Now, just so you know, I use the program to heal, but I also use it for me in my everyday life today, because let's face it, life isn't easy. It keeps throwing stuff at you. And there's challenges all the time. But since I healed, I can draw on two situations where I've used it and conquered. Because I ended up with a really bad concussion a year ago because I can play hockey. <laughs> it was like I ended up with this really bad concussion. And um, I contacted Candy at that time because what happened was like a concussion is trauma to your brain and your brain wants to go to the memory of trauma. And the first night was the first time I had a panic attack falling asleep. And I was just like, whoa. And I started my, my retraining loop and I shut it down. But I can remember contacting Candy after that. And I just needed the confidence and reassurance that I could use these skills to help me recover and heal faster. And I did. Um, so yeah, I just went in immediately into what I knew and I shut it down. And I was able to recover faster and I believe with minimal impact because of that. Um, so that is a gift. Yeah. And the other really crazy thing is um, I've also been able, like I'm so available now, but I've been available to support my brother, Chandra, in his journey to like heal a re reoccurring brain tumor that he has. And like, it's amazing. Like this time that should be full of like fear and worry and anxiety and sadness has actually been like some of the greatest highs and moments of joys. Like, that I've ever felt. And like that's the hugest paradox ever. I will never go back into those darkest days of depression no matter what. It's like, yeah, we're human and I can still experience like sadness and hurt and fear. But I just like, it's like Annie says, you're the observer, like I see them for what they are. You learn and you just, you move on. You move through it. Um, like it's just, it's hard to fathom, and, but it's beyond amazing. So yes, my life has been nothing but a miracle since that day. I appreciate every day and moment. My children have this mother that's alive and living, and my heart, oh my God, is just full of love and gratitude. And like you guys are all worthy of this same feeling. Like you're gonna have your own journey and your own experiences. You're not gonna do what I did, but you're, I just want you to feel what I feel, because it's amazing. Yeah, so looking back the last couple nights to prepare my speech, I'm just 
amazed. It's hard to actually believe how many things I've done in only two years. So it kind of defies logic. Like time isn't linear to me anymore and my energy is no longer proportional to how many hours of sleep I get. It's just like this untapped, like it's just this potential inside of you that is there when you need it and when you live like from a place of passion and purpose and you're plugged in, you just can't stop me. <laughs> <laughs>